Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Social and political issues. Boy, boy, we are really into political issues right now. Okay, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, Oregon Voters Digest. Co-hosting today is my, my dear friend, uh, Don, Don Dupe, yeah, you, you're familiar with Don, we're on, the cam- we're on the campaign trail, we're still on the campaign trail. I guess we are. We're yeah. still on the campaign trail. <laughs> well, we got a third guy that's going to be on the campaign trail with us, another, another vet, if you will, yep. and who happened to run for mayor the last time we ran, and, um, and that was a very exciting time during that particular time, and we're excited about, uh, about him being on the show on the Oregon Voters Digest, and, and we're all looking for a whole newfound friend, because... We want to make sure we try to motivate him to stay involved in the process. He's heavily involved in the process. We want to make sure we promote him. We want to make sure that, that we want to educate you and, 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 and uh, expose you, if you will, to we, what we feel the kind of leadership that uh, here in the metropolitan Portland area we need. And so he's here. He's, he's on, also brought his, uh, his chief of staff, if you yeah. will, with him. Uh, he, you know, her name is Jackie Gen- Juniper. Is that right? Did I do that right, Jackie? <laughs> Jackie Juniper Davis. <laughs> Okay. You gonna say hello? Uh, she's gonna say hi. Hi there. The there she is right there. There she is. <laughs> there she is right in front of Because you know that's what it's all about too. It's our youth, it's our future. Yeah. That's family. what it's all about. It's about the family. That's what that's it's all family. about. Okay, good. Community. So we got so we got Sean here. Sean's uh, Sean's a vet and he's he's got uh, he's got a number of things that, that I think we he, we can share we, we want him to share with you. We wanna get want, want him to start off with to identify who he is and mm-hmm. and his background, how he got the Portland, Oregon, <laughs> and uh, what he's doing now, and what he's looking at the possibility of doing. Okay, with yeah. that, Sean, you have at it. All right. Uh, well, I spent 13 years in the military, six, uh, about seven in regular army. I uh, got out. I came to Portland, went to art school. Um, I was, you said seven in regular, then you in the reserve. Is that what you? Yeah. Doing? Well, after September 11th happened, I joined back up in uh, the uh, National Guard for okay, okay. six years. Okay. Uh, so I joined up September 12th, 2001. And then I was in Iraq in 2004, mm-hmm. and I uh, got hurt pretty bad. I got mm-hmm. Purple Heart. Um, after I, I was able to heal up from those wounds, I uh, went down to uh, Katrina, mm-hmm. uh, or New Orleans, after Hurricane Katrina, and helped out down there. And then after that, I just got out. I couldn't do it. People mm-hmm. were like, why would you retire with only seven years left? You could have took the mm-hmm. full retirement. But I just couldn't do it physically or, or mentally or spiritually, mm-hmm. for that matter. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, So I got out. Um, I was uh, floundering for a while, like a lot of the uh, veterans do yep. after they come back. And uh, art gave me purpose. I write, you know, I'm a published author. I wrote a book called The Wax Bullet War uh, about, you know, my experiences trying to figure out who I am after war. Uh, and, you know, I paint and, and, uh, and draw like my daughter here. Okay. Uh, and so I, uh, you know, what else gave me uh, direction again was the VA. They, get, let, they let me go to school. I was on vocational rehabilitation. Okay, oh, so that's how you went to school. Okay. Yeah, voc rehab. Uh, in five years, I had a master's degree, and then I started. Uh, I had a I had a job, so I started as a graveyard uh, security guard, uh, going to school. You know, I had a family, and uh, my older kids, and I worked my way up to the number two guy in the state of Oregon. And I, um, at the, after I graduated my master's degree, they offered me a job uh, in Texas. For six figures, uh, you know, and uh, I, I quit. That's not what I wanted to do. I love Portland. I wanted to be here in Portland. And so I, I became uh, an adjunct community college teacher. So I teach writing. And I teach writing here at Clackamas Community College, at Mount Hood Community College. During the summer times, I mm-hmm. teach at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, at the uh, William Joyner Institute for War and Social Consequence. You travel out there? Is that yeah. What you yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, at, for about uh, two weeks uh, mm-hmm. in the summertime. Uh, I teach a lot of veterans and stuff, you know, to write through trauma and, and such. And, um, you know, when uh, the selection season came up for mayor, uh, well, I have to back up. You know, I, I was at um, I'm the post commander for the American Legion post on uh, Alberta Street, 21st okay. in Alberta, and we really, you know, I saw a need in my community. I saw people not having enough food. I saw uh, homeless veterans. I saw uh, people without uh, clothing. You know, and, and and also I saw a lot of people who needed to do the veterans needed to do something, have a mission again, uh, to help their communities out. 
And I think that's really what we're missing a lot of times when we're trying to help these veterans. Yeah. We have to ask mm -hmm. them to do something for us because they're mission driven. And so we started doing that. And in about two years after I did that, that's when the election uh, started and the people uh, in my community asked me to run for mayor. And, uh, you know, I was naive. <laughs> I was like, well, why not? I'll do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was really easy to sign up, right? <laughs> but uh, Until you got in it. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you don't think that uh, yeah. all of the national uh, problems with politics would exist here in Portland, Oregon on a local level. And absolutely, absolutely exists. And you have to mm -hmm. really uh, fight through it, you know, yeah. especially if you don't have money, they don't, you can't get into debates. You know, the, the media won't cover you because they don't think that you're a credible, uh, credible candidate, but you can't be a credible candidate until the media covers you. Uh, and so that was, it's difficult. On the know? poll. Oh yeah. On yeah. the poll and have enough money to get out to people to get the poll. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, it, it was really difficult, but you know, we did pretty well. Uh, I did end up in the, in the big KETU four person debate or four candidate debate, even though I didn't have the money that they did, you know? I got to Is that be, where I met you? I met oh, yeah. you a lot before the election, oh, though. Okay, okay. You know, it, being vets in Portland, it's a small world. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I got to be at the uh, the City Club of Portland debate, and that it was, it took only four candidates, you know. Uh, so, you know, I, I like we were talking what we were talking about before, yeah. we did change the conversation. I'm glad that I ran, you know. Uh, there's a lot of people that... Uh, were believing me and uh, and that's hard to let them down you know but mm -hmm. i don't know I, like and like we were talking about before at this time in our history we have to be involved in politics oh, yeah. Absolutely. you have to be. oh yeah oh yeah there, there's too much at stake you know we got the future right here yeah. it's it's too much yeah you know? yeah yeah well okay well let's talk about let's get hit on some of the areas that um, that you are, you're doing right now let's, you want, we, First off, let's talk about the, the, the vets a bit, you know. Cause yeah, you, I'd love we, to. As far as the issues of the vets, you know, I mean, uh, do you think we've got a better program now compared to maybe 10 years ago? Eight the years VA? Ago? Yeah. I, I, um, I don't, yeah, I think yeah. we do because of the fact that there's more of us uh, and it's it's more in the, the mindset, you know. When I first came back from war uh, injured, I was one of the first National Guard Oregon National Guard soldiers sent back for more, you know, in mm -hmm. a stretcher. They didn't have a clue what to do with me, mm -hmm. you know. I they sent me to Fort Hood, Texas, for three months to without anybody, you know. I was in a for the first two weeks I was back. The only person I saw was a nurse that took my vitals, and I thought I was under quarantine or something, mm -hmm. you know. They had no clue what to do. They were unprepared. Um, then when I was getting better, they put me on. They created this program called CBHCO, which is a California-based healthcare program. And I had to go to Sacramento, but then they let me stay up here. But still, I didn't know what to do. You know, mm -hmm. now they're doing better. You know, I, I, I deal, I, I, um, I know a lot of veterans that are coming back. You know, because we're still, we still have people over there. You know, a lot of people don't understand. Oh yeah. We still have two wars going on right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and we have people over there fighting these wars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'll see one uh, right after the show. We're gonna go and visit one of our vet friends. He had five tours. He's a Marine. Mm -hmm. Three Purple Hearts. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, he's having uh, problems just like all of us. Mm -hmm. you know, too so many tours, though. Too, Trust me, that's too, too many. many. That's too yeah. many. I mean, I realize it, in the core, you know, you get to the point you can just throw me anywhere with a switch and I'll come back. <laughs> wow, they would still go if they <laughs> could after yes, they five would. tours. They can't yeah, they go did. anymore. Yeah. They, they don't let them. It's really, really sad note, that aspect of it. Well, look, um, okay, now, now, as from a look, now I'm, I'm going back and forth a little bit. Don't get in on this deal. I'm thinking well, about I, the mayor I deal. You got some kind of an award, and I'd certainly oh, like yeah. to hear about that. Yeah, it was the best type of award. I didn't even know I was nominated for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Emily Gottfried uh, Emerging Leader Humanitarian Award okay. the city of Portland gives out. Wow. Uh, it's the... Uh, you mean City of Weird. <laughs> city of Weird. <laughs> the city of Portland gives it out. It's the Humanitarian Council uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in the Office of uh, Equity and Human Services. I cool. believe. What commissioner was in it? Go ahead. Uh, 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 Commissioner Fritz is the one that uh, oversees it, yeah, okay. I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, yeah, I didn't even know I was nominated for it, honestly. And I'm really uh, honored to do it. You know, I looked up the past um, people who, who've gotten this award, mm -hmm. and they're all social workers, you know. These people are, are really leaders in that field, you know. I feel like 
you know, I, I just, I teach college and I do the American Legion and the community stuff. I, I feel like it's, uh, I'm honored, but it's a huge responsibility to mm -hmm. continue on and doing mm -hmm. what I, what I can do to help out. You mm -hmm. know, I want to live up to the, uh, to the award. Okay. Some of the things I want to share with, with talk to, we can talk now, we can really talk to this because of some, some commonalities aspect of it. And when we both ran for mayor. Yeah. And Don was right there. We yeah, we were both buddies with Don. Yeah, yeah, we were sure. right there, you know. And that's you know, some let of me just say this. It was really <laughs> unfair to me <laughs> yeah. to have three of the three of my best friends run for a city office at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am tough. I supposed to do? Yeah. It, it worked out well. First no, come, first serve. It, 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 it worked out well. You know, we were out there yeah. trying to deal so, with the issues, you know. And then yeah. naturally the police yeah. thing was an issue. For and sure. That's why I really wanted to get Don involved in had We had similar outlooks on that, where everybody else is saying, you know, we have to... Uh, I don't know if they're anti-police, but that's how I took it. You know, I was uh, in the first seven years of my military service for two and a half years. I was military police mm -hmm. and putting that uniform on and, and doing what they do. That's an amazing thing. And, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to give them more. You know, mm -hmm. I want to give the you know, we cut their funding and we don't hire people. They're understaffed. And, and if you look at some of their salaries, which is online, you can look at it. They're making almost double their salary in overtime, yeah. you know, yearly because we overwork them. And if you work that many hours in any job, you're going to get burnt out. Mm -hmm. But if you work that many hours as a police officer, it's going to happen. I mean, it's it's uh, it's like deep psychological scars mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. can leave. The other thing is that the police uh, need to be reorganized. It's not. Yeah. I know they're. I know they're shorthanded. They are, and they need to hire more good policemen. But still, they're too specialized. Mm -hmm. They got too many guys working traffic. Uh, they got too many guys working in internal affairs. I mean, uh, when I was when I was involved with this earlier on, I went out to the traffic division, which is out at the old North Precinct, and the sergeant out there told me they had 24 motorcycle officers. Mm -hmm. Those guys' job is exclusively revenue producing. Yeah, that's the only job is to get revenue for the city. I look at that and I see. Meanwhile, they cut their liaisons, cars. neighborhood liaisons. Yes, mm -hmm. I see. I see two-man cars out on the street. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's not that they're not going to be writing tickets, because I walk around, I ride around all day long. I see traffic violators. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, they're too specialized. Too many people in gangs. Too many people in traffic. Internal affairs, which shouldn't even exist, takes up ten or twelve cops. It could be two or three more two-man cars back on the street. Yeah. We need to get these guys back on the street. Who comes up with that then, recommendation? Who comes up with that recommendation? Me. No, no, I'm talking about who comes up with the recommendation from the standpoint of well, saying this is what we this is what they have right now. The who mayor signed the check. The mayor. The mayor. Yeah. That's the response. They're not going to do that. Okay. They're not going to okay. do that okay. because they are afraid of offending the police. Uh, the traffic division has been around for a long, long time, and it's just time for it to be reorganized. So how do we break that that, that blue line, so to speak? We hire somebody in the mayor's office that's going to have the intestinal fortitude to take that on. And mm -hmm. so far, we haven't had anybody to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't have any. Yeah. I don't have any uh, hope that Ted Wheeler will do it either. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I actually applied to be on his team. You know, they mm -hmm. had the website saying, yes. "Hey, do you." I don't like. I want to get more involved. I'm still going to probably run for other positions later on, but mm -hmm. I want to do what I can. You know, and sure. uh, I think that, I think Ted Wheeler will listen. To people, he has listened to people that I've seen, um, but I think he needs to hear those voices, and I'm hoping that he puts people on his team that will have uh, different voices mm -hmm. or different perspectives in him, and he'll listen mm -hmm. to them. Well, I'm not going to be so. the good guy. Yeah. I'm not going to be the good guy because, no. as, far as, as far as I'm concerned, he's mayor now. We have two mayors yeah. right now. Yeah, we, we have do. one sitting in the office, and we got one waiting. And so, as yeah. far as I'm concerned, he should be orientating now, now. as far as I'm saying, to find out what's going on. And the other thing is that it, it, the other thing is that there were some 14 people that ran. Yeah. Yeah, 14, yeah. 15 people, 14, so to speak. 15. We got we got 15 people that ran. You would think, right after the uh, right after he basically bought the election, <laughs> and he's now the mayor elect expect, expected. But then we got Charlie Hill. I would thought that it would, it, because all of us ran. We 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 we, 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 we care enough about the city to do We so. ran for office. Yeah. They should have had a gathering. A gather, he should have mm -hmm. had a gathering of all those folks to talk about these issues mm -hmm. and then g give everybody an opportunity to talk about police and what they feel might be the solution. Yeah. In fact, as you know, we, That's smart. before we got off the, before we came on the air, one of the points I was going to make, and that mm -hmm. was the fact that, as far as I'm concerned, because they've always had a problem with the, you know, the mayor 
appoints a chief. Yep. And then he basically is the supervisor chief. And then he, he's the liaison to the police department. No, there's then, also, yeah, there's there's also police liaisons. Yeah, there's a liaison, too. So, there are two so, of them. Yeah, so, so my point is that, hey, why not? And then they've got that union, but you got a president of the union. That's basically who basically runs the, the troops. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so the idea is that why not just go on and, and make that person, the president, because uh, they have to appoint their chief. They mm -hmm. appoint the president. Mm -hmm. And that makes that person responsible enough that he has to have access to these folks, right? Yeah. And if he's working for the mayor, then if he's working for the mayor, the mayor's got some statue there. Then naturally the mayor would have someone in his own office from mm -hmm. the standpoint of uh, connecting with, the, with that other side of the deal. But um, uh, that was, that was going to be my suggestion had we all met. Yeah. yeah, and then everybody yeah. would have the opportunity to talk about it. Then we can have a discussion. It's not yeah. wrong with discussion yeah. because we're looking for leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm thinking when I think about that, I also think about the fact we had all these protesting. You know, I mean, in fact, when Don and I were here, we, we, we Don, we, you know, I can remember when they had the situation from from uh, Josephine County, and and those folks were marching downtown. Yeah. I went downtown with them, yeah. and we we chatted with them and all, and got on the bullhorn the whole nine yards. But I think it's very very important that the mayor should know who's coming in this city, mm -hmm. especially on the protesting side. Oh, sure. See, we yeah. need to have a discussion on that kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. It should be the mayor on the front. That's part of the job. Yeah. See, but to wait on the sideline and let all of the situations come up with like the homeless and this, that, and the other, sleeping in people, this, that, and the other. We got all these folks on the streets. Well, I think we got to get more community leaders involved. I'll give you an example. So last Thursday on Alberta Street, every every month, uh, especially during the summer times, right when it's nice out, um, I got the guys in uh, the veterans from my uh, American Legion, and we contacted the city and say, hey, we want to help out. You know, we want to be a part. We live here. We want to be a part of this. And uh, the city talked to us one time, but then they just kind of shined us on and didn't talk to us anymore. I mean, that's a loss of resources. You talked to the mayor? You said you talked to the city. I, mean, I talked to the, the mayor's aide. Mayor's uh, aide. Yeah. Aides. At least they, they, they did send somebody over and, and we spoke to them. Uh, the police used our post as a headquarters, you know, before. Okay. Uh -huh. In fact, that when we had that shooting, was it last year, yeah. at Don Poncho's, they were all inside of my post. I was outside, and me and a couple of vets ran over there to see what was going on. And the police got there, you know, they came in there right afterwards. But what I'm saying is, if you have these resources, we want to use our veterans back in our communities. You want to use community leaders, especially where, you know, that live where the event is happening, like last, uh, last Thursday. Why not use us? We weren't asking for any money. All we wanted to do was help. You know, mm -hmm. and we got pretty much just like, all right, well, that's that's cute, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we could have helped save some lives. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, downtown does it. They got their own, the business community kind of got together, and they're they're paying folks. They got an actual staff that goes around. They're not carrying yeah, any weapons or anything like that, but they are. Sure, that's the clean and safe, but yeah. that, but they're funded from the Portland Business Alliance. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, the private, I'm private just saying. Entity. Just use us. We're here. You know, you, you've uh, got enough. Folks why not to, use community centers across, like. Uh, uh, not only American Legions and VFWs and vet community centers, but you can use the Elks, the Eagles, you can use uh, the uh, Native American Leagues, uh, NIA, you know. Mm -hmm. Use use them. Let them have a voice in their neighborhood. Let them uh, stand up and, and, and control, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they wouldn't be carrying weapons or anything like no, that? No, no. Okay. But okay. Uh, no, we wouldn't have uh, carried any weapons. Okay. Just as liaisons. You know, yeah, we we're talking yeah. about how, how much the police are understaffed and they mm -hmm. had to get rid of their neighborhood liaisons. Mm -hmm. Use us as like, all right, you guys can be, um, you know, be take on a role of leadership in your community. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should be. Uh, uh, we need more community because if not, what happens is we got uh, there's a little bit more uh, hope now that Chloe was uh, elected city council. But it was they're all living on the West Hills, you know, or, or whatever. That's exactly live. right. Yeah. <laughs> that, what voice do we have in City Hall when they don't even come out to where we live, you know? Uh, so how do you how do you like what what did you like about districtization? You know, I would I would that was you, that was one of the things that I wanted to happen. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, yeah, add two more uh, city council members east mm -hmm. of 82nd and North Portland. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, make the council look like Portland, not like a bunch of rich people, which white rich white people. But, but see, that, again, that would have been again the discussion again, the same thing. Yeah. Had, had we gotten all everybody together? Well, that, we're talking about changing the, the city charter. City but charter, that, yeah. but we can yeah. do that. Yeah. We can do that. Well, in all due respect, even even if we did that without the the thing already done, we could have had the discussion. Yeah. And then they would have gotten through whoever wanted to be mayor, if you will. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And and uh, you know, because it's still an issue about. Uh, 
who gets to be selected because it's all about the money. If you don't have the money, you can't get elected yeah, in most cases. That's how it went right? down. That's pretty much true. Yeah, yeah you got the media. And, and when I you, mean, what, what did... So, uh, Mayor-elect Wheeler spent eight hundred thousand dollars on yep. that, or he raised eight hundred thousand dollars on that for a job that pays one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year. You know. But but there's millions, if not billions, of dollars that are going to be made because of the Oregon Comprehensive Plan, and they and they said, all right, now we can rezone and we can and we can increase density. That's dollar signs in contractors' mm -hmm. eyes, right mm -hmm. there. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. that's the reason that they're raising so much money to to be a part of this. Now that said, I don't think that. Uh, Mayor-elect Wheeler is going to do a bad job. I think that he's he's going to do his best because I think that he has aspirations to do more. You know. Yeah, but he got to represent the people and the issues. I mean, you, I, you got issues. But that's why I'm saying if, get the if, communities if police, involved. Uh, that's why I want to be a part of his team because I can give him a perspective of the people that I live with. I, I'm always at the post there. You know, come on by and, and check it out. Uh, I talk to people every day uh, from my neighborhood. But you know, Sean, do this with all the other. But Sean, at the same time, if you if you're running for office, you should be at least aware of what's going on in the community before yeah. you sign up to say I'm I'm running for office. Yeah, I wouldn't agree. you think so? I agree. You get me? And you were. Yeah, you were. I was. Yeah, yeah. but he came from Salem as yeah. uh, the yeah. treasurer. Um, yeah. You know, I understand what you're saying. I, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I've been around. If anybody, I know a lot of stuff and whatever. Yeah. And I'm not trying to say that. Uh, I would have voted for you. <laughs> well, the, the bottom line is that I'm not going to hide anything about whatever. I mean, when I signed up, I knew that I had responsibilities and I, and I knew what my platform was all about. And in we fact, we had some I, good people running. We well, did. I liked uh, even uh, Jesse. I know he's unorthodox, but I like Jesse Sponberg. Uh, Sarah Ianarone. She she was really passionate about trying to help. We had a lot of good people running. And you're right. We should have met to end. Yeah, in, just in smoke. even at the end of the deal, and just just lay it on out. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think that makes a lot a lot of sense aspect of it. David Shore. I didn't mention him. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Good, no, good no, guy. No, I mean, not not a lot of folks. Good. Now, what what do you think about the the homeless situation? I mean, I, I work. How, like how I said, do you I'm feel also, about the homeless situation? Well, I didn't say it on, on, on when you on were running for mayor. What do you think about that? Oh, we're out of control. Out of control. Totally. I mean, it's it's. We we need to do so much more, you know, but we need action from people. Like I said, I'm on the on the board for uh, Do Good Multnomah. It's a group that helps the uh, homeless veterans, and the fact that these the main two people running for mayor were saying that all our veterans, homeless veterans, are off the street. No, 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 no not no, even no, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I deal with them every every single day, you know. Uh, we, I've taken vets to Do Good Shelter because they mm -hmm. just didn't have a place to be. Um, so they're a great organization. But again, another issue again. Yeah. See, another thing to sit around and have discussions. Yeah. I think we were the only two veterans that, that, were, that were running yeah. for mayor, and that would have been an opportune time to educate them yeah. about our background and kind of give them a better feel of what's yeah. going on. Well, that's why I'm hoping that um, I can get on, on the mayor's team, because I do. I, I have, uh, I don't have the experience you do, but I, I'm willing to listen to you for sure. But he doesn't have the experience I do as that's far right. as like that's veterans right. go. That's right. Uh, and really the community in Northeast Portland right now, it's changing so much. You know, I know that it's been gentrified and uh, I, I've seen... Which is another issue. I mean, that, whole that, that, that's issue. another major, major issue. And, yeah. and in all due respect, again, I, I, again I'm not going to be the good guy with this guy unless he, unless he really comes up with it. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm the employer. Let me say, You're right. I am the employer. You're the employer. I'm the taxpayer. Yeah. I'm the employer. Yeah. He's the employee. We, we and I'm yeah. not going to be sitting around here playing the game as he's the God Almighty. No. No. We're going to have to do something, and I'm paying someone to do it. I, gr I agree with you office. completely. You know I, I would never, uh, I'm not going to be the yes man or yeah. anything yeah. like yeah. that. And I'm I knew that about you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So he needs to understand. He needs to talk to people. And he, yeah. needs, to, he needs to go back, get that list of folks, put together a meeting, and let's talk. I mean, uh, because he's not going to be able to do it by himself. Because trust me, there's Can't a change. There's a change in the making right now. You got a lot of these young folks that are out there right now. Every they don't want to hear. Day. They don't want to hear no talk. They, they don't. In fact, they didn't even want to have a meeting. Yeah. I mean, you've got to come out with some concrete issues, if you will. Think about it. Here's a guy at one point in time. He was county chair. Yeah. If yeah. anybody knew what Wapato was all about, and yeah. mental illness and this, that, and that, that was his job there. Yeah. He spent four years doing that. Yeah, he should have been at the front page, front, on the front table. He did. I, I threw. Uh, so I didn't use my money to put together lawn signs and and door knockers. What I did was I I, I, I created this big uh, event to talk about Wapato, to talk about how we can help our homeless situation. I had uh, Israel Bear was there as a speaker. Um, uh, uh, Help me out with uh, Right to Dream Two. Um, uh, Ibrahim Mubarak, he yeah, was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they're all there talking, and Ted showed up, and he and he was there for about a good. What, what did he say? 
He was there for about 15 minutes. But the fact that he showed up, uh, my my whole plan for it was, uh, we. I mean, I, I, I completely understand people saying, well, we don't want to warehouse our, our homeless. We don't. I, I, I know that. I, I work with, like I said, like I work with Do Good Multnomah, and I work with homeless veterans and stuff. But that place does have a drug and alcohol facility, uh, 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 addiction facilities. Yeah. It does have yeah. beds. Yeah. It does have land. Uh, and, they, and if it yeah. was a community uh, uh, driven, like uh, let them come to this and make it their home type of thing and get rid of the bars and stuff, we could have housed a lot of people. Not just 500 people because they had 500 beds. Well, they got that other land up They had 18 they acres. Got, they got to build they tiny houses, all kinds of stuff. We could have had farms yeah. out there that yeah. they could have used. So I, I thought it was a good idea. It should have been open. My point is that they could have taken those people off the streets. For sure. And then and then then you can build, go in and and, and well, not get even them taking them off the streets. Just allowed them to have a place to go. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but I understand understand where I'm coming from. Then you got transportation problems. Then people are saying, "Well, you guys, I don't want to go this far." You we did that climb. with uh, we did that when we opened up the the shelter in Multnomah Village. We were, we were transporting people sure. on buses. You know. What is, what is they, it doing now? That's closed now. See, that's what I'm saying. Just, what I'm. But what I'm saying is if we would have opened it up and we could have had shuttle service, we would have had to talk to TriMet to see if we can't get another couple of buses out there because yeah, it only comes once okay, a, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you to a certain degree, but at the same time, I say a lot of these folks are mentally ill in this aspect. They, they, need, they sure. need attention. Sure. And it's not about them trying to tell you mm -hmm. that, you know, hey, look here, I know what my problem is. I'm just, just give me another drink or something. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? No, yeah. you're here to take my care. I'm trying to get you out of this situation. And yeah. it's not going back the way you were. To start sure. with, you got to help them out right then and there. Sure. But he, so it's, it, and so the leadership is, you know, okay, fine. Let's get them out of downtown, put them over there in that, in that Wapato while we have it, right? And look yeah. at, look at the weather right now. Look at the oh, weather yeah. right now. Yeah, look at the people that are on the street right now. When you walk out this building right now, yeah. you can drive right down MLK and wow, see people in the corner. Walk down area. Alberta Street. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous as like that. So that's a, again. I hate to say I told you so, but yeah. if I'd have been elected sheriff in 2006, Wapato would have been open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd have opened it. I interviewed him way back when. when you he and I would have gone down there with yeah. the keys and opened oh, yeah, the door. Yeah, yeah. I was going to give $30,000 of my salary as sheriff to turn the lights on and run it. Yeah. That's right. Well, you could just do uh, the request for proposal, have somebody run it. Yeah. They did that for Wapato. Yeah. It was, yes. they, they, they had. They said, all right, here's what, if anybody can make this work, here's $1.5 million, yeah, yeah. you know, and they did that just a couple of years ago. And why can't we make it work? Yeah, but, I mean, but my point is that you got a homeless problem. <laughs> you need beds. There it is, sitting right there, mm -hmm. and we're, sp we're spending some four or $500,000 a year just to maintain it, yep. just just sweeping the floors. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Wheeler. That's insulting. Yeah. That's insulting. Yeah. Intelligence. Insulting to me, Tax yeah. money. So anyway, that, that's yeah. that's another piece. Now, what about jobs? You know, I mean, when, when, when you think about it, no, in fact, let's, let's get on this other piece about this whole issue of gentrification. Yeah. We made that statement about the fact where it's pretty well known world nationwide. It's supposed to be the white city yeah. in, the, in the state, in the country, right? Yeah. And, well, uh, and, and, I and, know and there's a black community aspect it, of it. Historically, yeah, a black community. But uh, and, and I don't ever want to underplay that. But not only that, but I mean, the people that made... Here's, here's how I see Portland, why Portland got on the radar nationally and been such a great city, is because we had a lot of creative people here, and, and not people that uh, were like going to be professionals doing something, it's people like, uh, I'm going to be an artist. You know, you couldn't go someplace when, when in 1999, 2000, you could go anywhere. Like, your waiter was working on a screenplay. Uh, you know, the person, the cook in the back was in a band. You know, everybody's so creative because they chose their art over uh, being a, a big professional job. But they brought that art into the jobs that they had. They didn't have to pick uh, money. They, they picked their, their lifestyles. And because of that, we had, you know, all of these people that brew and beer, you know, so we became number one, the best coffee, bikes, uh, uh, dogs, you know. But now we're making people choose money because we've raised the rent so far up you know and either you have to get a double job or you have to you have to get a second job or you have to uh you know change careers into some money and you don't get to do your art so what i'm saying is the people that made portland great are the people they can't afford to live in the city that they made great anymore mm -hmm. and we're getting them all out of here and, and they're all i've seen them they're all moving away you know yeah yeah, yeah. and and I understand, like, my neighborhood, I, you know, I live right on Alberta Street, historic black neighborhood, but, I mean, the businesses are going, like, the no is closing down, um, there's no, uh, most people that own the businesses there are living in California, you know, so, yeah. it's it's insane. Well, again, that's, again, that's where leadership comes into play, see, 
Mm -hmm. We had good leadership as far as our city council and our mayor aspect of it. And in that, that area was sort of de designated. In fact, they put boundaries on it when they said District 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea was that at least it was contained. You know, and it wasn't a black community. It was a community where a number of the, of the residents happened to be black. Yeah, but a lot of was, artists. Was, a lot was, of but, artists. But the point of the transition was that, but there was nobody there to nurture it. Mm. There was nobody I, there to nurture it. Well, I, look. Just, I just have to say that the gentrification of Albina it was a pretty good idea because the old Albina was a dangerous, dangerous place to be. You couldn't walk there at night. You couldn't be around there without being assaulted. It was full of drugs, heroin, alcohol. So gentrification has solved But not the whole community, though. Well, not, not, everybody. not everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody, but that's how the that's how the community will support well, it. Poverty, I think poverty alcohol. creates yeah. crime. And, and yeah. federal dollars. Now, don't yeah. forget the federal, federal money. Federal dollars, absolutely. Lots of federal money. But okay. It's and a lot safer that, place. It's a lot of safer place right now. It's safer place. But now. you still got to be worried about those blacks that lost their homes and stuff. With the high I'm rises. I'm concerned stuff. about them, but I'm okay. not concerned about them robbing me. I know that, but my point is that they're not there anymore, yeah. right? They're in the pen. Mm -hmm. uh, good. <laughs> Okay. Good. All right. So we're we, we, anyway. Hey, look like we're on our way. You can see that. See. Yeah. He's right there. See. Yeah. yeah I, I I can see myself. Man, he'd be arguing with me in it every day, but we'd still get the job done. That's the uh, key. Well, I'm All gonna right. stay in it. I'm gonna run for something sometime. I've been talking to some people, so okay. uh, I want right. to stay local. Well, we're gonna keep, we'll have you on again. Yeah. I'd we'll talk to. more about these issues. I think it's yeah. very important. Good. Good Thanks, deal. Bruce. Tell Taylor said hi. <laughs> if I get on, he's organized. <laughs> well, if he doesn't, we'll, we'll really get on. Yeah, we'll get on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for being here. Yeah, Thank you, Jackie, for being with us. We appreciate you very much. You want to say hi to the crew out there? Tell them yeah, hi. Say hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> tell them, say, Bruce will be right back. Just tell them, yeah, Bruce, say, Bruce, will be, Bruce will be right back. Just just say, Bruce will be right back. Can you say that? <laughs> okay. She said, Bruce, don't be back. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Okay. But we'll be right back, folks. Take a moment. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome, folks. Again, social and politics. I mean, that's where we are today, and, it, and it's politics, big time. It's at the front of the line. We've got to, we've gone through the presidential race aspect of it. That's still a major, major, major issue. People forgot they didn't vote, and if you didn't vote, guess what? There you are. You got four years to deal with the issue. The best thing to do, is, as far as I'm concerned, for those who are really, really stressed out, start preparing yourself to run for office. You know what I mean? Start preparing yourself. Finding out what the issues are in your re your responsive com your communities, and at the same time, f figure out what was the platform of the person who just recently got elected. His name was Donald Trump. I mean, he's he, he has, he's not president yet, but right now, since he's gotten elected, they say he's a, he's president now, and that's not the case. We have two presidents right now. We got one sitting, and we got, we got one that will be be president come January. The, the one who's there now is a, is President Obama. 
Okay, so he's still responsible. So the bottom line is that we, we know what the issue is. Job is really the biggest. That's the big, big issue. But start dealing with those issues. Have these community forums, if you will, among yourselves, with your neighbors and things of that nature, and discuss these issues. So when, he's, so when he sits in that seat come January, you can just start writing those letters to your respective congressman and this, that, and the other, and say, hey, look, I got need for this, 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 that, and the other, whatever it is. But my point is that let's not just blame one person because no, pers no one person runs the whole shop. Trust me. It's all these other individuals, and this it's you. It's a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So be responsible and act like one. Okay, now we get this show right now. Another major issue here is the whole issue of race. And uh, we got Donna. Donna. Donna was here last week. Donna Maxey. She basically runs this 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 operation called Race Talks, uniting to break the chains of racism. An opportunity for dialogue. I mean, she's been doing a fabulous job. In fact, she's been doing such a good job. In all due respect. A lot of folks don't really see it. Some of the some of the folks who are dedicated will go. They will go. They're there. But in all due respect, it's a major issue right now. They they they've, they've sort of painted this this particular president to be a, to be like as a racist aspect of. It. So guess what? By having a discussion of defining what racism is all about, that's the best. That's the best. I think that's the best uh, help pill you can take, if you will. You need to know what it is because if, once you define it, then we can deal with it. But right now, if you just if we're just re overreacting about it, that's not going to do us anything. So that's why we got Donna here, and she's here today, and she's going to be here many more times. Donna, welcome again. Thank you. All right, and then my old friend Jim. You've seen Jim before, uh, Jim Lewinberger. Jim's run for office. He's he's very familiar with various issues, a lot of legal stuff and whatever. And we've been knowing one another about oh about 10, 15, 20, yes. 20 years now. Yep. At this point in time, so he's been very much aware of what's going on and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he's a very, he's a realist, right up front with it. He, <laughs> trust me, he's very much of a realist, and he gets involved. Besides his own practice, he's got family and the whole nine yards. So we got Jim here, and what we're going to do, we're going to sit down and, well, as we're sitting right here, we're going to see if Donna will share with us what she feels, uh, uh, the direction that we need to be going, what issues that, what issues are that she feels are, that she gets from, if you will, her discussions with her, her folks that she meets, she meets once a month. Yes. Once a month, she meets once a month, and trust me, they're they're, they're, they're very. And we're gonna again for the benefit of you, those who are watching now, because everybody's looking at the show now. Uh, we're gonna give her an opportunity to kind of share a little bit about what is race talks and its origin and and its rationale and and and, it, and its its goals and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's fair. Fair enough. Why don't you start off with that, and then we'll just let, I'll, I'll sit back and wait. Uh, Race Talks is a program that I started after getting involved in the Portland Public Schools um, Race Initiative, Equity Initiative, um, which was in reading the book um, discussions about. Um, see, I just went blank, Bruce. Okay. I'm, I'm really. I, <laughs> that's okay. Like, courageous conversations that, that, that's, about that's race. Okay. That's okay. Uh, written by John Singleton <laughs> okay. and Curtis Linton. And the book. The reason I had such a strong reaction to it, I mean, I've read tons of books about race and, and, and all kinds of issues, especially being a teacher, but um, what was so moving for me about this book is that there was a, um, a colleague of mine who has been, best way I could describe this person is a bully. And mm -hmm. this person, it was not, um, you know, particular about race or gender this person was a bully mm -hmm. and what was so interesting was that when we were going through exercises about this using this book in this format this person got it mm. and I thought this is powerful if you can have these conversations and structure them in such a way that people can sit back and not have an emotional response to what's going on but have an intellectual response and sit down and talk to people and take a different perspective from how an incident is occurring that they might be able to have breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that in mind, I uh, through a long um, march through different things was asked by McMinimans to be a part of uh, one of their programs. and and encouraged McMinimans to sponsor this program along with Uniting to Understand Racism. So we have been very successful. We're finishing up our sixth year. We have worked with probably over 15,000 people now. Um, it's, it's a great program. We have 150 seats every month. We usually have 150 to 250 Very people. diverse. 
very mm -hmm. diverse. We uh, most of the people who are there are white, though. Sixty-seven percent are white, mm -hmm. and what we really need is more people of color to come. Mm -hmm. um, come be involved in the conversation. As I like to say, you cannot talk about race mm -hmm. unless you have a person of color mm -hmm. in, com in the conversation. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like you two sponsoring a birthing mm -hmm. conference. Mm -hmm. Mm, you mm, uh, cannot mm, do that. Mm, you cannot yeah, do that. You can right. be ever so empathetic, <laughs> well, I've sympathetic. I've been there three times. Yes, yes, you <laughs> were there. You were there. And you were empathetic, sympathetic, involved, <laughs> loving, caring. Yes, I and was. And you have no idea what it's really like. Uh -oh. You have <laughs> you no got, idea. You got him on that one. You got him on that one. He's smiling. Trust me, you have no idea. So, um, I mean, one of the things that, that spirit imbued in women was you have this wonderful gift of a child mm -hmm. so you do not remember the pain that you went through bringing this child into this world because if you did you wouldn't do it again mm -hmm. so trust me you don't know okay okay, <laughs> okay. all right so um race talks we meet the second tuesday of every month and um one of the, one of the main things we do we have a program or a film something of that sort and our panel and then we have um small group discussions where we sit and discuss issues of race we have a facilitator and uh like i said every we encourage that there's a person of color in every group mm -hmm. be and and it's it puts the onus on the person of color to kind of carry that discussion and it's not fair but the reality is it's not fair that as a person of color you carry the onus mm -hmm. of, of the racism mm -hmm. in this country either so um there are a lot of things that we're doing. We've covered many, many topics, and this next year we're moving into activism more, uh, bringing in organizations that are working on activist issues and encouraging people to sign up at the, at the Ray Talk event to be a part of this organization, um, encouraging people to have discussions in their homes, um, encouraging people to get to know other folks. Mm -hmm. uh, I recently spoke at a... Um, at a church to a group of people from Seattle. And I mentioned that I was a third grade, a retired third grade teacher. And one of the gentlemen came up and says, well, you know, you mentioned you're a third grade teacher and I have a third grade child and, you know, when do I have the talk? And I said, you don't, you don't have the talk because your kids already know what you think. They've been watching you their whole lives. Even before they could form words to say, mm -hmm. they know how you feel about various people. They know the programs you watch on TV. They know the discussions that you have that you think they're not listening to or understanding. Mm -hmm. And so what the best thing you can do is demonstrate through your own actions what you want your children to be like. And I, I feel very proud. Um, of my daughter, uh, she's a convener. She has she was raised around many different kinds of people. She is uh, her father was white and Jewish, and she has uh, been, as my sister said, I invented a new word. She has been bat mitzvahed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that is not a verb. Oh, she okay. had a bat mitzvah, uh -oh. but uh, she has been around people of many different cultures and so she's been a convener she has friends from her friends look like the united nations mm. and you know they get to know each other they get to be around each other and understand that you know we all want the same things mm -hmm. Mm. i think abraham maslow said it best with his hierarchy of needs um those are the things we want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we all want the same thing okay well, break down you, you you said you had about three or four items that we want to discuss only three or four five Nine? Nine is fine. Okay, so uh, the first thing, the first thing I wanted to talk about was the poem by Maurice Ogden. It's called The Hangman. And it talks about, it, the poem is four long stanzas. And it's really an interesting poem, but it, it discusses how good people do nothing. Mm. The hangman comes in and builds his gallows in the courtyard square. And the first person he grabs is uh, a man from another land. Hmm. And so people, you know, felt that this was wrong to have the, the gallows there and his hemp rope hanging people, but they, did, they were afraid to say anything. And then next he comes through and he gets a pro somebody protested it. So the person who protested that he had hung this alien, as he call, as it says in the poem, um, he was next. 
Hmm. And then after that, they used, um, they killed a usurer or an infidel. Those are people who don't believe it the way that I believe in God. Hmm. And um, so the poem goes through a whole list of, of people who are hanged. And the, per, the author of the poem is startled to realize that he's the last one on the list. Hmm. Anyone to know why? And the hangman lets him know, you know, you stood by and said nothing when I hung everybody else, you know, <laughs> you're a part of it. And I, I think that this is some of what I have seen in this country is, you know, this country was built on racism and violence. And we have a lot of this kind of talk going on right now. Uh, as of last Tuesday, a week after Trump had won the election, there were over 300 attacks on people of color uh, by white males. And, and there was one in Beaverton also. So we, uh, for race talks, we put together some tips for walking safely, a little pam um, a little flyer and that's a fundraiser for race talks and you know just some tips on how to be safe when you're walking and it's primarily for women um i want you two to jump in and ask a question oh, we are, to make a we are, i want to make sure time. we get all that stuff in, but we're going to ask some questions Trust please, me, he, please do. So um, there, there are just an, a number of things that have happened, and, and um, the thing that I will, I will say last is, um, before I get into Trump, is that there is an, there's a cartoon that is about how to, um, how to stop. It's called "What to Do If You Are Witnessing Islamophobic Harassment," and I would suggest that this is be used if you see anyone being harassed. Mm -hmm. um, but the technique was, it shows it on a, primarily on a bus, it uh, shows a woman who's wearing a hijab, the, the head covering, and uh, that an, uh, another woman comes up to her, she's being harassed by a white male, and the female comes up and sits next to the Muslim woman and starts talking to her about a topic, you know, that's a nice color you're wearing, or where did you get that? and just ignoring the person who's doing the, the baiting. And, um, and they continue to talk, and she, she reassures the person that she's there for her, not by saying it, but by her presence. And eventually the idea is that the harasser will walk away because they're being ignored. Because the thing that makes a bully or a harasser feeds them is, is your fear. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what um, this this is, and, and in fact, this evening I'm going to an event at the um, Muslim Education uh, Center, and to find out, my daughter asked me, "What what should we do? They're they're starting to register Muslims. What should we do?" And I thought, when I saw this event, I'm going so I can ask that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, um, eight years ago, the United States elected its first African-American president. Uh, has uh, relate, have race relations improved or gotten worse since his election? I think it depends on what you're looking at. If you're talking about the political arena, it's gotten worse. If you're talking about interpersonal relationships, in some arenas it's gotten better. If you're talking about overall, I think in some ways it's gotten worse. Um, there's a lot of fear. And there's a lot of fear that people who don't look like me, who don't think like me, who don't act like me will come in and take over mm -hmm. what I have. And I will be left out. Now, I'm curious because I... I um I have a number of cases in the Dalles. I'm a criminal defense attorney, and uh, that is, has a large Hispanic community, uh, mostly from Mexico, uh, and an older, uh, the older people are, are white, but they've, they've always brought in Mexicans to do the labor. Um, and I've gotten to know uh, people that are different ages, and it seems to me as though the youth don't see color, at least in that community, uh, but the older people definitely see color and race and, and they're and they have very strong opinions um, 
How about here in, in, in Portland? Do you, do you think, and you worked with third graders uh, extensively. Actually, actually, I've worked with everyone from preschoolers through adults. Right. But third graders, those are my people. So is there hope that the young children that are, have been raised in the last, uh, well, 20 years, are they colorblind, race blind, or is there still strong race identity, strong race identity amongst our youth, our young, young children? I don't want people to be race blind. I don't want them to be colorblind. I like this color. I just want people to have an appreciation for difference. And because I like me doesn't mean I don't like you. So um, it is not how I feel about me, it's how I feel about you, that's the issue. And I think that there is improvement in terms of race relations, but at the same time, there are still racist rhetoric that is put out there. And I like to tell people of color, and, and this is on both sides, uh, white people and people of color, white people have the system behind them, so they have a power, and they can be racist. I, as a person of color, can be prejudiced. I don't have the power of the system behind me to support my prejudice against other groups of people. I say I. I don't, I don't have mm -hmm. the issue. Mm -hmm. Personally, my feeling is is that if I'm so wonderful, why should I be threatened by you? Okay. If we're both in competition for a job or anything else, if I'm confident about my skills, then I shouldn't be worried that you have skills also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of relationships with kids, I do think that kids are... Um, improving things. An incident happened recently that was shared with me um, and I, I shall not tell the arena in order to protect the guilty, but there was an incident that occurred where an eth a, a group of people who are considered to be an ethnic group, some people who for, were from that ethnic group spoke up and said that what was happening in the mainstream of their ethnic group in this country and I th in this country and in the world in the world in, in the country that they have taken over since World War II so I think you know what I'm talking about um, that they felt that this was wrong that they were oppressing a group of people in that country and they stood up for it and they caught a lot of flack from their community and they had to back down from it hmm. so you can speak up but there are consequences to speaking up and when you speak up you have to be you have to say i am clear about why i'm speaking up i am clear that i am prepared to deal with the consequences of my speaking out and i will work to convince other people to see my point of view case in point south africa um when south africa it started with i think it started with polaroid it started with Polaroid, a boycott of Polaroid when it was found out that Polaroid um, was in South Africa. And so it was started by a couple in, in uh, Louisiana and New Orleans that said, let's not buy from Polaroid anymore. And so that's what started it and ended up helping to start the change that happened in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We all have to stand up and see it as our responsibility. And it's not just, we can't put that responsibility on children. Adults have to be the ones doing it. I mean, how, how if you're my parent and you tell me I better think a certain way, then I have to think the way that you think or act in the way that you think because I'm dependent on you for my livelihood. But Donna, it's on that, on that same note, what about the adults? They were kids at one point in time. And where, where was that break, if you will? And when I think about that, I'm thinking about what were what was their educational introduction, if you will, to the whole issue of racism. On the, I had the a anyway. personal incident that happened to me. I had a friend in sixth grade who was white. A um, couple of girls, but this one, we were. I had just moved to a new school, and we were very close. And my sisters were in high school and college, and they said to me she's going to quit being your friend at some point when you go to high school. 
and I said, oh, no, and we, she and I talked about it, and, and she said, oh, no, you know, we're friends. I would never do that to you. Well, it happened in eighth grade. It didn't, in wait, it didn't happen in high school. It happened in eighth grade to where she quit being friends with me, and she just, like, dropped me like a hot potato. And it was very interesting, but what it was was a socialization, the pairing up of boys and girls, the bec coupling. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what led to, oh, to, the, um, to the change. Wow. We got about two. Can, can you hang for two? Yeah. Go on. Talk, talk again. So um, I, I, I think that students are influential but they have to be very careful. And, mm -hmm. and I think that part of the fear that people have is being thrown out of the club, the group that they are part of. I mean, you're an attorney, and that's part of who you are. That's part of your identity as a person. Mm -hmm. And you would, I'm sure you would have a very difficult time giving that up. I would. And so, you know, we cannot ask children to do things that we as adults are not willing to do. So that's part of what it's all wow. about. As, as you can see, folks, we can we can probably continue this discussion about three or four hours worth. I mean, she, she has such a wealth of information and exposure. And I think it's very, very important during this particular time that we need to take the time, Donna, to hear as much as you, much as you, you can share with us and hopefully be available to us at this point in time and would hope and motivate the folks that are out there that you need to attend these, these, um, these, these classes that you want to use. These, these groups, these group meetings that there, she has. In fact, when is the next one? Right. Our right. next one is January 10th, January 2017. 10th. At what time? Um, from 7 to 9 at McMinimins Kennedy School. In and Portland, people right? can in, in Portland, and people can come and purchase food and drink okay. and be a part of the discussion. We also have, we also do community police forums. Right. And our next one will be uh, Franklin at Marshall in March. In Portland. In Portland. Okay, fine. And, and the phone number or something to contact or whatever? Just a website? Um, we have a Race Talks website, www.racetalkspdx. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Hey, I want to really encourage you to do that. I mean, I think it's very important, especially now. And we just need to communicate. We need to communicate, okay? Because we, we're going to get out of this whole situation. Everything's going to be just fine. Trust me, it'll be just fine. Okay, fine. Folks, it's been great. Have a good one. Take care. As old George Page used to always say, back to what you believe. Remember that guy? I remember George. Okay, fine. Take care, folks. See you next week.